All right, let's have a short lesson on control volume analysis. <clears throat> so when we have a fixed control volume, you know that the time rate of change of the stuff in it is equal to the net source minus the net outflow. <clears throat> this will make you great at making finite volume methods for CFD or structural mechanics analyzing people's claims that expenses for certain lawsuits were paid for with interest off of interdepartmental loans, all sorts of nice things. <clears throat> all right, so a control volume R is a fixed spatial region through which the deformed body is free to move. So the existence of R has precisely no effect on what's going on. It's just uh, a region that we're looking at stuff in and seeing how much, say, mass, momentum, or energy is on it or in it. <clears throat> so because R is spatially fixed, the time derivative of the integral of a quantity in R is equal to the integral of the partial time derivative of that same quantity <clears throat> for a fixed spatial location. So we have the integral over r, phi of x and t, dv, that whole thing dot in the book's notation, that dot like that is defined to be equal to the time derivative of the integral over r phi, x, and t, <coughs> dv. And that is equal to the integral over r of phi prime, x and t, dv, where, like before, the prime means partial time derivative for a fixed spatial location. In the deformed configuration like that. All right, let's do a little bit of sort of Reynolds transport theorem -y and rearrangement of stuff that we did back in the balance of mass section. So for any quantity phi, we have that rho phi dot, where the dot here is the material time derivative, is also equal to rho, ugh, rho phi prime plus div rho phi v. <coughs> All right. I was sure that that was the case, but I said, well, let's make sure, as I was making my notes, because you should always do that. So we can expand those using the product rule. That is equal to rho prime, or rather, rho phi prime plus rho prime phi plus phi div rho v plus rho v dot grad phi. All right, so then we can do that is equal to rho phi prime plus v dot grad phi plus phi rho prime plus div Ooh, we should make that a 
square bracket row B. All right, well, this is equal to zero by mass balance. So this is equal to rho phi dot, since this here is phi dot. So we're good. So that, that is, in fact, the case. All right, and so now then, if we look at the integration over r of rho phi dot dv, well, if r were convecting with the material, that would be equal to the time derivative <coughs> of the integral of rho phi, but r, as it turns out, is not convecting with the material. However, we can use this for rho phi dot to get that is equal to the integral over r. So this would be called going from a non-conservative form or non-conservation law form to conservation law form, um, where you are taking the divergence of a flux on its own instead of like something dot grad something. Well, in particular, grad something acting on the velocity. All right, so this is going to be rho phi prime plus div rho phi v dv. We can split that and apply the divergence theorem to the one that's got the divergence on it. So that is equal to the integral over r rho phi prime dv plus the integral over r's boundary of rho phi v dot n <clears throat> dA. And we've shown that that first part is equal to the time derivative of that integral. And then plus the integral over the boundary of rho phi v dot n <clears throat> dA. So this second term here is the net flux out of phi, where phi is, you know, a quantity, a capital phi. Um, here, lowercase phi is phi per unit mass. So rho phi integrated over, say, the volume would be the total extensive quantity, capital phi. <clears throat> All right, so then the same logic applies for, instead of a scalar field phi, a vector field g, if we get the pen. The integral over r of rho g dot dv is equal to the time derivative of the integral of rho g, and then plus the integral over the boundary of rho g v dot n dA. <coughs> so in light of that, um, we can say, well, not in light of this, but in light of you know the stuff above. So we'll just make a new thing there. Um, so the integral over r of rho dv time derivative of that whole shebang is equal to the integral over r of rho prime dv, which is equal to minus the integral over r <coughs> of div rho v dv. So that's from mass balance. You know, we just replaced rho prime with minus div rho v, since the two have to be equal. And then we can apply the divergence theorem. Then we get that is equal to minus the integral over the boundary of rho v dot n dA. 
So this is saying that the time rate of change of the mass in the control volume is equal to minus the net rate of mass flow out. You know, so V dot N is positive out. So that whole thing makes sense. The amount of mass in the volume would decrease if there's a net efflux of it. All right, so we can do the same thing for momentum balance. So R is a spatial region, so we can take you know, our, our integral form of it. It doesn't necessarily need to convect with the body. So we have that the integral over the boundary of T N <coughs> dA plus the integral over the volume of the generalized body force dV is equal to zero. All right, well, B is equal to the conventional body force, B naught minus rho V dot. So then we have that um, the integral over the boundary of the stress traction plus the integral over the volume of the conventional body force is equal to the integral over the volume of rho v dot dv. Well, hey, that one we already calculated is um, if we take this form for g but use v in it. You know, so this is for any vector field g, so it also applies to v. Then we have that is equal to the time derivative of the integral over r of rho v plus the integral over the boundary of rho v v dot n dA. All right, so this is saying that the net external force applied to it in terms of surface traction and body force is equal to the time derivative of the momentum contained in R. So, you know, don't think of these forces as being applied to the control volume R, because they're not, R doesn't do anything. They are being applied to the fluid that occupies R at that instant in time, is really a better way of thinking about it. <clears throat> All right, so at that instant of time, the force that is acting on the fluid occupying R is equal to the time rate of change of the momentum contained in R plus the net flow of momentum out of R by, you know, advection, if you would call it that. <clears throat> That's always a fun one. You can find uh, people and call it advection or convection. And uh, we'll actually wait till they call it one and then just insist that it's the other. People get real uppity about that one. I don't know why they do. But they do. You should go troll them. Lord knows I do. All right. So that's it for linear momentum balance. Uh, the book provides another control volume form for angular momentum balance. Um, it's the same process. I don't really care to go through it because... Well, one, it's the same process, and two, I can't say that I've ever used the control volume form of angular momentum balance like that in my life, whereas this one I use all the time. Um, and I think that generalizes. I don't think that there's like a whole bunch of people hiding out there that I don't know of that use that control volume form of angular momentum balance.
If you ever run into it, tell me. I want to hear about it. All right, so let's get to generalized power balance because that one's kind of cool. And it's going to be pretty applicable to our next topic, which is going to be thermodynamics. All right, so we can integrate the generalized power balance over our control volume, recalling that it is not work being done on the control volume, it's work being done on the fluid that occupies the control volume at this moment. <clears throat> so the integral over the boundary of T n dot V, no, not that, you only need the one below you, not above you. The A plus the integral over R B dot V dV is equal to the internal power. All right, and now we're going to split B up into, you know, its uh, conventional part and its inertial part. So we have the integral of the boundary, T n dot v dA plus <clears throat> the integral over R b naught dot v integrated over the volume. Well, that there is the conventional external power. And that whole thing is equal to the integral over R of T inner product grad V. dV, which is once again the internal power, or dissipation as we'll call it in a little bit. And then plus the integral over R of rho V dot dot V dV. Right, so that's just uh, <clears throat> the inertial force dot the velocity. And so now let's copy this. I guess actually let's get rid of this. All right, and so that um, is equal to plus the integral over R of one half rho times the time derivative <clears throat> of V dot V. Um, so that's you know, pretty easy. Um, because the time derivative of v dot v is 2 v dot dot v, you know, that whole thing. Um, all right, and that is integrated over the volume. All right, and so then we can apply the, the same deal as before. that whole thing is equal to, if we can squish it together a little better. So that is going to be the time derivative of the whole thing plus the integral over the boundary, one half rho v dot v 
the dot n da. And so that, that follows the exact same procedure as the other getting from here to those two <clears throat> is the same as it was for um, the like, yeah, this row phi one, <clears throat> where now phi is v dot phi. All right, so, so here we have then that the conventional external power is equal to the internal power plus the time rate of change of kinetic energy contained in the control volume. plus the rate of kinetic energy efflux through the boundary. So we'll say net efflux, net efflux rate, you know, but duh. All right, so that's gonna be it. For this lesson, that was a pretty short one. Um, should be pretty painless, I hope. Uh, there's another two little sections in the basic mechanical principles. I, I guess it's two chapters in that section. Part, they call it in the textbook. There's this like referential forms for the mechanical laws and further discussion of stress. Uh, you should read both. We really already talked about the referential form for the mechanical laws section, um, at least the momentum balance part. We didn't do the expended power part, um, but I have faith in your ability to read that page and figure it out. The further discussion of stress is, you know, also not like a really huge leap um, so that second Piola Kirchhoff stress, that TRR that they talk about there, is pretty useful for constitutive models and, you know, also the fact that it's power conjugate. But that'll be the one that they tend to model for, like, nonlinear elasticity. Um, we're not really going to go through them because we're a little short on semester, if you hadn't noticed. All right, so the thermodynamics section is pretty short. Um, I expect we'll probably finish that up by mid next week and then we'll do some constitutive modeling. Should at least get through compressible linearly viscous fluids, which would tell you how to do any other constitutive modeling. All right. Have a good one. Catch you later.